Now, today I want to talk about our soul. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 tells us that we live by faith and not by sight. That is why when our bodies die, the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. It is our soul which has the eternal life of God comes to us. That is why we may die in our bodies, be buried and forgotten, but our souls remain intact and live with God. What is the requirement for you as a believer? Well, the journey is clear. God has given us a spirit, and the spirit that God has given us endures a lot. It's a spirit which is enduring and a spirit which is everlasting. Because God is spirit, he says that his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. You'll find that in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 24. So as we walk this journey together, remember that God has given us a soul. And our soul is our spiritual strike or the energy that controls our, our moral being. God has given us a free will to make decisions as to do good or to do bad. At the end of the day, our soul remains in his custody. So, even though we live by the flesh and we encounter things from the flesh on the earth, God does not desire us to live as fleshly beings. That's why in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 we are reminded that what is of the spirit is apart from what is of the flesh. And what is of the flesh apart from what is of the spirit. They are apart so that we may not do what we want. God desires that we live a life of righteousness, a life of purity. And for us to live a life of righteousness and purity, then we must fashion our spirit to, to, to be in conformity with the spirit of God. That's why he says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24 that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with his passions and his desires. My desire is for you to live a life full of Christ. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 reminds us that we should not let this book of the Lord depart from our hearts. That we should meditate upon it day and night so that we may be careful to do everything written in it. Then we shall be fruitful and prosperous. And if you walk the journey, the Lord reminds us in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 to 9 that these commands that he gives us should be upon our hearts and that we should impress them upon our children. We should speak about them when we sit at home, when we walk on the street, when we lie down and when we arise. We should bind them in our, on our wrists and engrave them on our forehead. We should also inscribe them at our door frames and on our gates. This is the word of God because the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It divides even to uh, chastising the soul and the spirit, the body and the mind. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So God's desire is for us to live as spiritual beings and not as fleshy beings, because to be absent in the body is to be present in the Lord, and the Lord is spirit, he reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, that we shall live by faith and not by sight. If we were living by sight, then our bodies would be the, the main emblems for our desires. And because as believers we live by faith, our desires should be that of the spirit. And remember the spirit is a driving force for our souls. The spirit leads us into paths of righteousness or into paths of sin. God has given us his free will spirit, the Holy Spirit to chastise us and to condition us to walk into paths of righteousness. So this is our call. And this is our desire. Remember you are built on the flesh but God has sowed a seed of a spirit in you, which is your soul that has eternity. So, bless God with your spirit and indeed 
you shall be a blessing even to him. In Jesus' name we pray. I thank you, Jehovah Father, for this moment and this occasion that as I come before your presence, remember this brother, sister, Almighty God. Remember, Almighty God, everyone who is convicted, Almighty God, not to live by the flesh but by the Spirit. That indeed, O Jehovah Father, you are fashioning them, O Jehovah God, to walk into paths of righteousness. You are fashioning them to live by the faith and not by the flesh. You are fashioning them, Jehovah Father, to stand the test of time, to overcome the spirit of this earth, the spirit of the flesh, and to embrace the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed now in Jesus' name. Amen.